Hey guys, and welcome back to our kitchen, not included. Clay's amazing space colony simulator extraordinaire. My name is Twitch, and we have been on the LZ Alpha now for 1,318 cycles. Me and the 13 duplicates here, well, 12 here, and what the wild wise all the way over here, probably out finding his food. Where is he? Ah, oh, he's down in the bathroom. Oh, I do, I do apologize, sir. I do apologize. We are making our way into the future, trying to make a comfortable world if we can, but we've been having a few issues, but we have been solving these issues in the background. As you can see, we've got a sustainable oxygen source up and running now. Well, what a what a great start to the episode this this was totally as you can tell by the how the oxygen is here this was totally up and running when i last looked at it i'm not entirely sure what's going on here i do see a break in the power though so maybe it's something to do with that this should have carried on powering that screams to me that we need to have more hydrogen generators involved as well as troubleshooting or whatever is going on over there. We're going to be upgrading our water systems over this way. And not only are we going to be upgrading the size of the tank, we're going to be pumping the water down to the hot, the oil wells here. We're going to start up a separate hot water line indeed. We're going to come along and start breaking uh, the, from here onwards if I... We're going to start breaking this system off from the cold water line. Technically, I feel like I could have given the carbon skimmer hot water, but I like to keep it cool down here, so we're going to go with that. As well as upgrading the size of the tank, we're going to try and bring down a hot water line coming down towards our oil wells down the bottom, or our singular oil well right now. We will get a second one going. As you can see, I've asked for it to be disconnected from our cooler water line. I'm not entirely sure which of the uh, buildings we can pump hot water into. I feel like we could have done, gone in with the carbon skimmer and it just kind of outputs whatever color, uh, whatever temperature water it outputs. But I'm, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to risk it. This this area over here is uh, on, I believe, the very brink of being not able to cool itself. So uh, I, I'm just, I'm just going to leave it as is. Well, at least the oxygen's flowing again. Let's go and have a look and see how we are doing on the water down below. Hopefully the box is pretty much done. Yes, it is. All right, let's seal that up. Uh, and then we're going to let people into here because I want to destroy all of this down here. Beautiful. Okay, the walls are sealed. Let's, uh, let's up the priority on this one here. We probably actually want to rip down all of the walls, right? Let's rip this side down before we rip the bottom down, else uh, we won't be able to get at these ones. Frank's letting a little bit of water out there but i suppose we can let him off all right this is the main event i suppose i mean it's it's all about the moving liquids right let, let's be honest here it's all about watching the liquids roll is he gonna be able to get under there and let like this whole mess go it's kind of a little bit disappointing when it's just drips we want to we want to see the big old tiles move yeah like that that's what we're talking about still not ideal uh this this is a, bit, a little bit better a little bit better there we go we got the weird weird sort of like wobbling aroundness of it that's cool oh frank going for a proper swim all right, cool, cool, cool. I think this is going incredibly well. This guy's complaining about a lack of water. It's all right. Hold your, hold your horses. There will be water, sure enough. Okay, we got this liquid line down pretty quickly. That was once again thanks to paying attention to what materials we're pay building this out of. So around here, we've got a lot of sedimentary rock. You can see it's sort of like all around in here. So we're going to build that out of this going down like so. We're going to build this out of that going down like so. I think we're going to bring the line down and around this uh, salt water pond, a, a tank, whatever you want to call it, and then come down and in the back like this one. Ah, yes, they built they built my uh, built my pipe extension here, which means I get to break that like so, and then ask them to destroy the rest. Oh, we have a problem. This line came up here to dig out some regolith, and she unfortunately got stuck on the wrong side of the uh, of the doors. No, no, miss, no, miss. Uh. Uh, the door's closed because there's asteroids inbound. This is, um, very bad. Very, very, very bad, in fact. Uh, hopefully she'll be all right for the moment. I think she can dig her way out over here. Uh, go on, miss. Go, if you can, please. Be safe. Oh, they're, they're starting to fall, but hopefully miss can get down under here. Oh, okay. That was, that was very lucky, actually. That was very lucky. Uh, she seemed very happy about it. Okay, all right. That, that, that kind of worked in the end. That kind of worked in the end. Why is that opening back up? Oh, because this ran out of power. Oh. Now that's not great. 
What a very interesting state of affairs that just kicked off. Hmm. Well, that was a bit weird. I hope whatever happened there has sorted itself out. In unbelievably good news, the water pipe is very nearly done. We will then have like almost infinite amounts of oil. I'm fairly sure the output of this oil well might very well be too much for this to keep up with. Are we at the point where we can sweep up any of this molten lead yet? No, not quite. Okay, so the pipe has been put in place. That means the water is being pumped down below to where our oil wells are set up. Okay, and this should hopefully start putting pressure back onto the oil system down here, uh, giving us a nice fl high flow. Start getting the power flowing. This is what it's all about, really. It's just getting that power going again. Another problem that we've got with the piping is in this mess here, and it's a bit hard to tell what's going on. I understand this, but I want you to focus on these three outputs here. They all output into this similar blue pipe here, the same blue pipe even, and it comes down, puts it into the liquid reservoir, whereupon it comes out and goes, hey, am I the right temperature? If it's cool enough, it will go out to the water supply. Not that that ever actually happens. Then it comes down, jumps over, and comes over, and is like, hey, am I too hot? In that case, case cool it down and then maybe if out here is too hot dump that on the floor i feel like these are in the wrong operation so we're gonna have to try and swap these around i feel like if the water is just being dumped out for cooling it doesn't matter whether it's 14 degrees cooler or not we need to just dump it out anyway so i'm gonna do my best to i don't know let's start with this i think we want to do one of those i think we definitely want to snip that there and maybe this one here as well uh, and then this sorry no not th not this one here sorry the next thing is actually to deconstruct all of this here. We're gonna, we are gonna be doing a check to see if it, the water is cool enough to come out, but it's actually gonna be happening in this space here. Of course, the next thing I need to do is to go around and swap these, uh, these land, these bridges around, and also try and figure out how to get through the the thermo aqua tuner in reverse but that shouldn't be too hard. Okay, first things first, we gotta turn this aqua tuner around, right? Biggity bam. Okay, we're going to do something a little bit weird. I've locked the door to the heat box over here. And of course, because the steam has got up to such a high temperature, it's been forcing its way out and into here. That's a big problem. So I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna cave, guys. It's it's finally time. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be a hypocrite. I'm going to put a liquid lock in. Down in the oil pit, we are slowly getting more layers. We used to just have a little T-piece down here, you know, the Tetris T-piece. Now we've got a full, like, three by two area. That's That's cool. That's awesome. So slowly but surely, this is going to fill up. Hopefully when we get this working a little bit better, the coolness across the, 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 the temperature gradient, that's what I'm looking for, from this side to this side, will uh, pull down the temperature of this blob of uh, pet, uh, petroleum a little bit quicker. We can get a faster flow going through. Uh, of, of course, downtime would happen just, just as they uncover this one here. I, I should have known. I should have known. It is literally a red alert status. Come on, Luna. I know you can do it it for me the steam in there is getting unbearable thousand degrees a centigrade mimi is coming to do no 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 don't do those ones yet We're, there's far more important ones to be doing down below okay deliveries made missile is here to do the actual dig and build okay beautiful beautiful no magma erupted up into her here uh kind of lucky about that actually i didn't i didn't think about that when we were putting down the plans about whether there was going to be so much pressure in here they would just erupt up that yeah that, that's very very lucky okay i think i think once this is being put into place whew, okay let's turn that off now on the continuing saga of the interesting cycle numbers, 1337, nice. Uh, we've just about got to the point where the steam turbines are able to turn over. We have managed to condense all the steam in this top room here, leaving it just full of this interesting mix of gases. And we are slowly trying to do the same here. This thermal aqua tuner has been doing the work constantly, as well as these two manual generators over here trying to power them. Uh, they have been dragging the temperature down in here. I mean, obviously, the thermal aqua tuner has been raising the temperature, but with the uh, the help of all the cooling lines here, they've been dragging the temperature down. Uh, and every now and then, when this has been kicking over, the uh, petroleum flow has been kicking up. Uh, we've got a little burst of extra power as well, uh, resulting in the petroleum inside this tank being 85 degrees. That is well below the 100. We're just waiting for the steam turbines to catch up. 
And so we've gone 30-ish days into the future. I was just leaving this running last night just to see how it would work. It turns out we've uh, kind of gone down to one steam turbine tipping over. We did actually have nearly a whole ton of water in here that was chilling down, and then this all flowed in, and it all poured it back out. So I don't know whether we're going to have any water coming out of this new system that we've got here. As you can see, all the water comes down into the tank. It then goes and gets dropped if it needs to cool down the local area. After that, if it doesn't, it can then begin this chilling loop that we have here. Eventually, it'll get chilled below 30 degrees. And apart from it hasn't, the, co the coldest we got was 42 degrees before the whole area opened up and became too warm again. I, I don't know whether we're actually going to end, end up having any water spilling out at any point. Uh, I have slightly raised the ambient temperature in here, or at least what we're going for. So back here it's 210 degrees because we had this lava egg. Uh, that's that's not what we want. We need a, a higher percentage of the molten lava egg. There we go. Um, the, the, the body temperature needs to be higher for that. And so we are running it slightly warmer. Uh, we're going to be running our steam turbine here at 215. These outer ones 220 just in case the temperature climbs up too high uh, liquid lock by the way just to stop the scheme the steam escaping out we were having a lot of problems with that and now we seem to have just just stopped it in its tracks one of the things that I've been doing during the 30 days is uh, letting this high pressure vent uh, spill a whole bunch of hydrogen over here. I have just noticed, however, that we are having a little bit of a gas trapping issue, and of course some of it is making its way out of here. So I'm going to ask for them to put a airflow tile in here so we can force all this polluted oxygen down, and hopefully end up with this being fully filled. Uh, put this tile down here, take this, this vent out, another tile, fill it all in, perfect hydrogen. Uh, as hydrogen is the best for not only temperature transfer, but it's also one of the gases with the highest specific heat capacity so it can move more cold through. And the final thing I want to do today is start rearranging this area over here so we can take advantage of these more um, solar panels that we have. I think that the 1200 watts or so that we have is just over because the 300s make up 1200 amongst them and then there's the uh, the, the little 80 watts over spill uh, and that should help uh, charge all of this lot but we're going to have to wire it up much more cleverly than we currently have it. But it's going to be it's, it's going to take some thinking on how to do it properly but one of the things that i do want to do is i want to make a little tank down here we've got this ethanol it is and it acting like a heat storage device it's just a huge place where we can keep some cool for when it's needed because every now and then the temperature spikes i have found out why and i will explain why but every now and then the temperature spikes uh and it's nice to have this ethanol here just kind of as a little buffer a temperature buffer uh to be able to keep things smooth particularly if these batteries are running low uh, I, I really want to make it so that the solar panels are taking care of that. So that's the thing. The thing that was causing all the temperature to spike up was every now and then, because this was just a, a tiny couple of tiles here, we would get enough regolith building up that it would contact with this bunker tile. And as you can see, this one is 39 because it is being cooled down by the petroleum next to it, which of course is hooked up wrong button hooked up to uh, this uh, liquid line here that is cooling everything down uh, so the two 300 degrees was making contact and trying to warm that up i'm surprised it didn't boil dry more often it, it kind of did all right Okay, having observed these two sets of batteries, I feel like we're doing okay here, but they could really do with a bit of a better wiring. So I'm going to bring this one down like so. We'll disconnect all this out and try and see if we can't make it look a little nicer. And then this one, I'm also going to run up this way to that. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not what I want to then be able to come into the top there. And then we'll take down all this extra wire and start giving us a bit more space to work with. Okay, the great hydrogening has happened. We need to uh, set this back to an insulator. I'm not sure whether we do want to set it back to an insulator tile, but it needs to be a not permeable tile to the gas. So we will go for the insulator tile. And then I'd like to start building this down. Maybe we can also deconstruct this. Though I'm a little bit worried that if we do, uh, we're going to let all the hydrogen escape out this way. I've gone about it a slightly different way just because I wanted to uh, be able to try and force all the hydrogen out. Okay, we, we, we did it. We did it. We, we managed to achieve. So now this this one should be built very, very shortly. Ooh, wrong button. Uh, and we will uh, then try and hopefully be able to remove this vent. That, that's kind of my next goal. I'm hoping we can corner build. Okay, so far so good. All right, we've made a solid box. It's got a bit of uh, plastic and not iron in there and some like obsidian and stuff, but I, th I think we're fine with that. It's a perfectly sealed in hydrogen box. 
Okay, the big old tank has been made, but of course it's not full because I want to move this over, uh, this tank of uh, ethanol, this pool of ethanol. I suppose it's not really a tank because it's not man-made, uh, but we want to be able to pump all of this down into this area because I reckon, I reckon we can fit another solar panel down here. Yeah, there's no right reckon about it. We can definitely fit another solar panel down here. We're almost definitely going to have a little bit of a spillage here, aren't we? I'm going to try and only dig in through these couple of tiles here, leaving this little jutty out one to hopefully hold back the pressure from this. That's my plan. I don't know how well it's going to work. I mean, we'll find out the moment we dig that tile out. Go on, miss. Let's see what happens. I'm expecting some spill, but hopefully not too much. Okay, I'm going to start the mop orders, and we'll just see who turns up to do so. Oh no, we got we got some mopped up, but now that I'm doing it, it's too much. Why? Why? Oh no, this is a much bigger spill than I anticipated. Oh no. Actually, we might, might be able to turn this to our advantage. Let's turn these down a little bit, and hopefully these guys will come along and build these tiles first, and maybe we can then just rip this out, rip this one out, and let it let the liquids flow. Look, we got a vacuum up here, beautiful. That, of course, would be totally ruined by the liquids flowing. Okay, so we've got two teams on the go at the moment. We've got the people trying to build the liquid pump and then the guys that are trying to rip all this apart just to let it flow. Uh, I think I'm even going to start ripping down all of this lot if it proves successful. We've just basically got a funnel here, look. Just basically a funnel. We may have to move the liquid vent over this way. I don't know yet. Team build the pump actually got a surprisingly, uh, surprisingly long way through their process before... Oh, gas? Gases? Yeah, okay, cool. I thought, wondered what that was about then for a second. It must have come in and hit something a little bit too hot. Look, the, the, the rock, the uh, the ladder is actually quite hot there. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and start ripping some stuff down. See how much we can look, just let flow and how much... Uh, actually needs to be pumped. Okay, actually, it's surprising about getting done before people come to rip stuff down. Uh, yeah, so it's same as when it was all getting built. It's a bit weird. Okay, there goes a big flow. All right, that that's pretty cool. In fact, this might be a little bit too much. Yeah, as I was suspecting when we uh, started putting this down earlier, it's not going to be enough. We need to move this down and around and let it flow from there. The liquid reservoir doesn't count as being flooded. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I know about that. Of course, there is a little bit of a dark side to this heatsink. If at any point it does jump over 75 degrees, I believe 75, 78. So let's say if it gets up to 80 degrees, uh, this all just flashes into steam and then we have problems. But hopefully, given the amount of thermal mass this entire uh, tank has here, it should be okay. Big shoulds. Okay, so the uh, the solar panels, incidentally, could totally fit one more in here, uh, are hooked up with the same system that we had last time, where they're feeding into the scanners and the telescope first. Oh, man, I want to move this telescope. Uh, then if these batteries are full, they're going to feed down into here. And then I'm going to have another transformer feeding into the main line that if these guys are full, that will then turn on. Okay, so it looks like all the power has been hooked up, and I've been asking Miss to come along and do a little bit of digging up here, but I think actually it is time just to hook everything back up. Not that one, but this one indeed. I want to come across here, and this will now all just open up. I had this secondary line coming over here to try and open up little bits of it, but there was uh, there, were, there were issues with that. Let's just leave that like that. It's going to be interesting to see how far Miss gets before the door fully opens and the rest of the regolith drops down. I should imagine it's going to get fairly far. Of course, the big old towers of regolith are not helping her out here trying to clear everything away off the solar panels i don't know whether they have anything to do with anything you know are they are these bits here warming up the solar panels not by the looks of it if anything i would say it was cooling it down but this one's fairly cold as well i wonder what sets the temperature of them it's not the uh, not the vacuum of space i can tell you that oh there we go all right we got we're getting some power we're getting some power beautiful does that mean it's flowing out of here as well it does all right cool well, this would be a true test of the system. All the uh, meteors are falling down. This guy needs to be uh, fixed up for some reason, but that's cool. Is he on a P90? He is. Okay, that's cool. We'll just let him do his thing. Boy, oh, yeah, look at that one get thrown around. All right, cool, cool, cool. I'll bring it back when the meteor storm has finished and we see how well the system copes. I've got a good feeling about it, though. I've got a good feeling. Oh man, this has been a long shower, but I think we've just lost the uh, incoming detected. If we press this, we can see that the line has turned green. This is all going to fall down. I want to know whether... It doesn't look like we're going to be in trouble anywhere, actually, looking about. Uh, this is kind of annoying, the fact that some has built up on the inside. Ah, this as well is also not good. So this is now all down to this guy uh, on the right here. Hopefully he can dig down underneath and unentomb his friend. Okay, there we go. All right, beautiful. Oh, that was that was really good, really good. No solar panels, no solar power though, because night time. <laughs>
All right, the power flows, all these batteries are full, and that means these guys are pushing out power. All right, beautiful. It's only uh, two kilowatts amongst them, and in fact, they're not going to be doing that much. Uh, let's have a look. What are you doing? You're doing a 1,000. Oh, they're both doing a 1,000. Where are you getting the full 1,000 from? Oh, no, I bet it's looping round. But it's this one. Okay, I'm going to take away these two transformers and just see how we go. Uh, I'd probably like to replace them with smart batteries, right? I'm a little scared. As you can see, the power is already starting to drop down. But I think we're doing okay. Yeah, no, we're definitely doing okay. In summary, it didn't go very well. We lost power through the smart batteries, which meant the space scanners shut down, which means they opened the door when we had the meteors coming down. So, whoa. So, no, no, not, not so great. We need to at least make sure it's got some power coming in through here. Well, the system set appears to be somewhat robust now. We got it through to the morning and the batteries didn't quite drain all the way out. So I feel like we've saved stabilized space. Over here, we've got a little bit of a better situation going with the water. Where unfortunately, occasionally, Mad Frank needs to come along and provide some power. But that is mainly because we're siphoning the, the hydrogen off to provide some better cooling over this side. So I would like to say that also we have stabilized the oxygen. And of course, down below, we have stabilized the temperature over here. So I think all in all, we have done a wonderful job stabilizing the base and maybe actually getting to the point where we could start bringing in some more duplicates. It's been a while since we've expanded and I think that is definitely something we need to do, but I will see you then when we're gonna do that. Bye.